Hey, what's going on guys? Rob Rian here and tonight we're going to be doing a quick install and review of the quick lift system from Redline Tuning for our 2013 and up Ford Escapes. This has really good reviews. Um, I got this off Amazon. This wasn't sponsored or anything, so this is an honest review and install. We're going to open it up, see what's inside, and get started. So once you open the tube, um, it has a whole list of everything that you should be expecting here. Just going down the list, you have your two gas springs with the angle fittings already on those springs. You have two different bags of black oxide coated steel um, ball studs, which are the threaded posts that you screw into the car, and then the balls that go into the sockets on the end of these gas springs. It comes with a unibit or a stepped drill bit for controlled diameters that you're drilling, which is pretty awesome. That's an actual tool that you can keep using for different things after this project. Um, it all feels really high quality. I mean, these springs, there's no way for me to know if these springs are better or worse than one that you could get off Rock Auto, but this kit is designed and spec'd for our escapes, and even the pictures on these instructions here are specifically pictures of our escapes hood and cowl area and everything. So the only tools that it says that you'll need outside of everything that is already supplied is an 8mm socket and a half inch socket. So let's get started. In reality, these are the tools that you'll actually need to get this job done. This includes a 3 16th inch drill bit for making a pilot hole. This is kind of a strange location that's hard to specify or measure on your hood, but they did a good job of giving you the crosshairs and the instructions on where to go. I did not have a center punch. I used a knife to kind of mark a little X. A center punch makes the starting point here much easier. It punches a little divot to get your drill bit started. And Redline recommends using a 3 16 pilot hole drill bit to get your stepped drill bit started. As you can see, I'm using a piece of paper to catch the metal shavings. As far as the stepped drill bit, it says to go to the third shoulder, which means that you push the first and second drill diameters through the hole. And once you bounce on the third shoulder, then stop. Step two is to install the upper ball stud. Use your half inch hex socket to tighten it down including the washer and the lock nut. So the stud goes in one side and the washer and lock nut are on the other. Tighten with your half inch hex socket. We now repeat the process on the other side, but this time there's the wiper fluid line. In doing the other side, the difference here now is that you have a hole that you need to make here. You have the line for the wiper fluid if you pop that out, get it out of the way, you'll have better access. So the instruction manual actually states to move the wiper fluid mount to the other side of the hood support. I actually relocated it and we'll have more details later on in this video. Again, use your center punch to make the divot and your 3 16 drill bit for a pilot hole. Use oil to help drilling. Use your step drill bit again. Wipe off any excess oil and metal shavings, and now it's time to install your upper ball stud as well as washer and nylon lock nut with your half inch hex. Now let's go to the lower ball studs. So our next step is going to be removing this eight millimeter screw from the lower cow piece. And we're going to be inserting our threaded post for the bottom of the gas spring right there. Nice and easy, remove the existing hardware. Then get your new ball stud and the washer. Send it right into the metal clip that's already in there. You don't need to over tighten it, just snug. Of course, repeat this for the other side as well. We're now getting ready to install the gas springs. Now use caution, make sure that your prop rod is in place or you have a friend to help you support the hood. When installing the gas cylinder, make sure that the body of the cylinder is up and attached to the hood support, and the shaft and the bent connector is down at the bottom of the base of the engine bay. Just press it on, and you're going to notice that the bottom still has a distance to meet. So you push up on the hood and push forward with the lower connector till it meets the lower ball stud. Again, repeat for the other side. All right, a moment of truth. The prop rod is down. The gas springs are in and the hood is up. That is pretty cool. Now watch when I lower it down, 
to about near the light is. At about a foot's distance up from the light, it starts to get heavy, and it'll definitely close on its own weight here, like I'm, I'm lifting significantly with it. But if you go past that point, no hands, it's supported. And that's pretty nice, I've never had that. So let me just go over a few points here that were not totally obvious when I first got this kit. The first is going to be that I do not intend on removing the prop bar from the engine bay. And my reason is, if you have to get underneath that wiper cowl um, at the base of the hood, which is fairly often if you need to get to the battery or the back of the engine, um, you're still going to need that prop rod because you're going to have to disconnect the gas springs because they mount where the lower wiper cowl assembly mounts. So you, you know, you put your prop rod back in, and then once that's in place, take your flathead screwdriver, pull the clip back, and disconnect your gas spring, and then your hood will rest just as it did before on your prop rod. It's really not hard, it only takes a second. Uh, just something to note with that. All right, note number two. When looking under your hood, you have this wiper fluid line that goes up to the spray nozzles on the top of your hood. Um, it was previously secured here, where this hole is. I relocated it to here. I drilled a 5 16 hole and then undid this clip and pressed it in there. It, it's really clean. It's You have a lot of slack on both ends. It's not going to get bunched up or caught or anything like that. Um, they suggested to wrap it around the front face here and that just seemed like a lot of strain and twisting that you put on the line so I chose not to do that. And then finally the last thing is that when you're closing this, you can see that the main outer cylinder body kind of rubs on the outside face of this rubber here. You know, your hood is not opening and closing a million times each day, so even if this does develop a little bit of memory, that's not a big deal. It's not going to hurt anything, but that is just something that I noticed. All right, y'all, well, that about does it for this demo on install and review for the Redline hood lift kit. It's pretty slick. There are the few caveats that we've already mentioned, but I don't think that those are deal breakers by any means. Again, this kit is $100. It comes with really good instructions. It comes with the step drill bit, uh, which you can use for other things. And it comes with a company that you can talk to if you have any questions, which I think is kind of a big deal. So as long as you remember to keep that prop rod in there for any work that you might need to do under the cowl, I think this is a pretty awesome kit. If you want to try it out for yourself, the Amazon link is below in the description. And as always, if you like this video, please mash the thumbs up button. Please share it. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching How to Escape.